Good afternoon. Um, let's just uh, get started. Uh, today's topic will be uh, soil nearing and MSE. Um, we will discuss four things. Uh, the first is uh, soil nearing design and uh, uh, then soil nearing wall facing design. This is the, the new function added to uh, visual slope. Uh, third will be a uh, reinforced slope design and uh, MSC wall design uh, following that. Uh, so we have a lot to cover. Uh, I was going to discuss something, uh, the theory, but uh, uh, due to the time uh, limitation, I will go directly into the application. The first one, we will discuss about how to design a uh, soil nail. So I will first uh, open uh, visual slope. Uh, this is a slope. Uh, the height is uh, 12 uh, meters. It's about uh, uh, 36 uh, feet uh, tall and uh, included two uh, parts of uh, material. Um, the uh, light blue one is uh, pale, which is uh, uh, which is a hard clay, and uh, behind that is uh, shell material. And uh, we will uh, see if this, uh, uh, this portion is stable. So when we do, we first uh, run a slope stability on this existing slope. So we open uh, slope stability portion, and uh, we have discussed that before. So I just uh, uh, make a calculation. Once it finished, it tells us uh, it's about uh, 0.962 uh, in uh, factor of safety. So it's in critical condition. So somehow we need to uh, stabilize it. So we'll try to use uh, soil nail to stable it. Uh, so we first need to discuss how to set up the material type for a soil nail. So I'll reset that up, but I will let you see how do we do that. We go to uh, soil nail. If uh, you want to uh, buy, uh, establish a new one, you can click new and then uh, this uh, uh, table will show you can you can put that in but uh, let's just uh, open the one we have uh, in this project so so now uh, a uh, let's see give them uh, the name so we can distinguish between the different soil nails and then this is the borehole diameter uh, in this case, it's a 0.3 meter. It's about uh, four, or four or five inches uh, uh, in diameter. And then the bond strength. Bond strength here is a 200. For like uh, a shell, we can consider like uh, 30 PSI. If a good shell, it can be 40 PSI. It varies from that. But the, Mainly, we need once we design that, uh, we need to uh, pull up a uh, test and field to uh, truly determine the bond strength. And then is the horizontal direction, uh, horizontal spacing. It's between the, the nail to nail, the spacing between nail to nail in the horizontal direction. And uh, next one is the uh, uh, tendon capacity, which is if it's a uh, uh, not strong enough, the soil nail tendon or bar will be uh, uh, will break itself. So we need to give the uh, uh, capacity uh, to it. Also, the head capacity. Usually, when we uh, put nail uh, put a nail in, we will have a plate on the top and the locket. But if it's not not locked uh, uh, strongly, then this the head will. Uh, will break. So we need to give a uh, capacity of the head. And the last one is the uh, uh, EA, which is the uh, compression or tension uh, 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 modulus. Uh, for soil nail design itself, 
you may not need it. But if you want to use the finite element to do uh, a deformation calculation, you will need it. Then we can choose either a shear, uh, uh, shear or tension. Usually we use tension, so we click tension, check tension here. So this is the, uh, the parameters we use for, for soil now. Uh, in this uh, problem, we have I have a two uh, different type of soil nail. Uh, nail A is for the nail uh, into into the shell. The nail B is the nail just in the tail that which is a uh, hard clay. So uh, uh, nail B is a little bit weaker than, than nail uh, A. So I have two different types of nail. So now I need add a nail in. The way to uh, add a nail in, uh, actually there are two different ways. One is you can just uh, draw it, say this is uh, a bonded nail. Uh, I can draw it and uh, I can use the length and the angle, uh, say it is 8.5 in length and the angle will be minus 10 degree. Uh, once we, we, we have that and we uh, hit enter and then this nail will be uh, drilled into uh, uh, this portion and after that we can uh, sign the material uh, property to the nail so you can put the nail in one by one and if uh, uh, there are many nails what you can do is you can uh, uh, generate it or array it. So we just do this way. We do that, we take the nail away, and we go to generators. And the second one is a nail generator. We click this, and the generator page will uh, appear on the uh, upper right corner. So from here, we first choose uh, a type of nail you want to use. So let's say uh, I want to use nail B first. And uh, the start elevation, uh, I would say 70 uh, meters is the elevation. The end elevation, I say 78. Uh, vertical uh, spacing, uh, I say two. And the angle, I would say 10 degree. And uh, for the unbounded lens in this case i just uh, choose zero and uh, the uh, bounded lens i choose 8.5 so once you fill out uh, this page and then you click ok so the nails will be uh, placed uh, into uh, into this slope uh, once we place the nail in and we can make uh, nail ca uh, calculation again. Uh, you click those buttons actually will give you the same thing for for for, for now. So we we'll click uh, one of them, just uh, just this, and uh, uh, we do a slope stability analysis. And uh, there are two options. One is uh, use the FHWA method. Uh, the other one is not using that. Uh, if you not use it. Every nail for this case will have the same capacity, but if you use uh, uh, FHWA, it consider the, the elevation, it will do some uh, uh, adjustment there. So let's just say uh, yes. So once the finish, you will see uh, the slope stability, the factor for slope stability increase from 0.98 to 1.3. We'll see that and you can you can see now the curve uh, is like that and uh, you will find the soil nail actually is uh, uh, the capacity for soil nail is not a constant it is gradually devel developed and uh, then to a point it will check if it exceed the, uh, the strength of the tendon itself if it's exceeded then this will becomes a constant. Also the front may, if it's smaller, 
then it will uh, will uh, it be less than in, in the middle. So it depends on where uh, uh, the uh, the filling surface uh, is uh, to de uh, to determine the uh, uh, how much reinforcement the nail will provide. And you can see this. And the first one uh, is the like it is the uh, reinforcement provided is a uh, 14 uh, kilonewton, and then the next one is is larger, and so on and so forth. So you can you can find each every nail in, for the for the for the design. So this is the way you design a soil nail. Um, so you put the nail in. Uh, I would like to do a uh, one more uh, way instead of uh, say instead of I put a nail uh, into uh, uh, this uh, uh, clay or teal material, I would do it differently. Just say uh, let's just uh, take this delete those. And I will add an, a different type of nail. So I go to the uh, generator again, and also still use the nail generator. I will choose nail A. Nail A actually is going to the shell, which is uh, stronger than the clay outside. So what I do uh, the same way, the start elevation is 70, 70 uh, meters. And uh, the end elevation is 78, and the vertical space is still uh, two meters, and the angle is still uh, uh, 10 degrees. And uh, the unbounded this time I put 8.5, and the bounded is 4.5. So once I put that, I start to array it. And you will see that uh, here, this section is unbounded, which is, uh, we do not need a, a, a grouting it. Uh, this portion in the uh, shell, we will grout uh, in the field. So this is actually provide the anchor force for, uh, for the uh, slope here. So once we uh, place the nail into this slope, we can run a slope stability analysis again. And uh, uh, let's say no for now. It's the same, it's uh, your preference. And uh, the uh, factor safety is 1.38. And uh, you will see the soil nail actually, the capacity increase, increase to a certain point, it reaches the, uh, the tendon capacity. And this portion is just to carry the, uh, the load from this point to the surface. It will not increase or, or, or unless the, the uh, uh, head capacity is lower than it will, it will be depend on the, the head capacity. Otherwise, it will just carry the load all the way from here to, to this point. Okay. So we can also check the, uh, the nail, we see uh, in this case, each nail uh, will provide 80 kilonewtons for the slope and make the slope uh, factor safety to be 1.38. So this is the second way you can, uh, you can do a nailing or an anchor. Uh, I would think this is more like an anchor there than the nailing. The first one is more like a nail, but uh, with visual slope, you can do a both way. Um, so uh, once we have that, uh, uh, in case uh, we have a, a wall in front of nail, we need a design. So what you can do is you come here, say uh, nail facing design, click that. Once you click that, uh, that is, the facing design page uh, well up, and it will tell the uh, will tell you uh, the unit used in this design for uh, for the length will be uh, in millimeters, uh, for force will be k 
Kila Newton and uh, for stress will be Kira Pascal. But if you use an uh, English system, uh, you use the foot and the palm, and uh, this will automatically change to uh, foot and, and the palm and uh, uh, PSF for for uh, for the for the force uh, for the pressure. So now we we uh, let's do the design. And if you click here, you will see there are five nails in different elevation. You can choose one of those. Or, or, or one by one, we just say we choose the one uh, 72, the vertical elevation 72. And then it will tell you the uh, horizontal spacing is two meters, and the vertical spacing is also two meters. The force here we, we saw was 80. 80 was for one meter per meter thickness, but actually, our the, the nail. Uh, spacing is two meters, so we need to multiply this by two, which is 160 uh, kilonewtons. So we have the force there. And uh, then we uh, need to put the plates uh, uh, into, uh, into the plate we choose uh, is. Uh, 20 centimeter, 200 millimeter, which is about uh, eight inches in the uh, eight inches. And here we also choose uh, 200. And uh, here we choose um, 20, uh, which is a little bit less than one inch in thickness. This is the, uh, the, the front plate. If you look at the, the, uh, the figures below, that's the the plate we put it in. And uh, then we need a studs. The studs is something like uh, like here. Uh, if you can see, uh, the studs is mainly if you have a, a final wall to attach to the initial wall, you need studs to connect the initial wall to the final wall. If you do not have uh, the final wall, it's just a just a temporary structure, then you don't have to, uh, you just uh, choose something, but it really does not matter because you're not gonna use that. So we, we choose a stud. If uh, this is in English, uh, it's in uh, uh, SI system, so they will give you a SI system uh, database. If it's English system, it will give you English uh, system database. So we choose one, say, by 167. So these are the, the numbers uh, for, for this. It's already in the database. Each, the, the meaning of each number you can see uh, from, from this figure. And uh, we say the grade is uh, 425. And we have uh, four of them. And uh, the spacing, we say one, uh, 50. It cannot be exceeded uh, 200 because it will be welded under the, 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 uh, the plate. It cannot exceed the, the size of the plate. So it's, I just say 150. Uh, usually uh, in, in uh, the English system, we probably use like uh, six inches uh, weld that. And uh, the initial wall, we, uh, we say it's uh, three. Uh, 100 millimeter, which is uh, about, uh, I would say about four to five inches. And uh, we choose uh, uh, the strength uh, is uh, 50. Uh, in English, I believe it, it's close to 4,000 PSI concrete. And uh, then we uh, also choose uh, uh, weld, uh, wire weld mesh. Uh, this is the, uh, the database. If it's an English system, it will automatically show the English one. And we say this is 152 by 152 by uh, 26, the last one. And it will give you uh, the area per width. And we say the grade is uh, still uh, 425 uh, 
uh, I don't know, maybe 425 equivalent to 60 uh, in English system. And uh, then uh, this is the, if you look at this figure, there's a wide ma uh, uh, mesh and also rebounds to uh, in vertical to in horizontal, we say. Uh, uh, we just choose the uh, rebound will be two, 20 millimeters and the grade is still 425. And uh, we have a two in horizontal, same uh, vertical, same way for horizontal, we use the same rebar and same uh, grade, and the two of them. And for the final wall, if you have a final wall, the final wall, I choose a 400 uh, uh, millimeter, uh, the strength will still say, uh, 50, and uh, um, I may not have the wide mesh, I just uh, use uh, rebar in horizontal and in vertical direction. Rebar, I, I will choose uh, 25 millimeter, and the uh, grade is still 425, and the spacing, uh, I choose uh, 200, it's maybe eight inches, uh, uh oh, yeah, eight inches, yeah. Uh, in spacing, and uh, this one is also 25 and 425, and uh, we use the same for the spacing. So once you fill out uh, the number, uh, then you can click uh, analysis, and uh, here we'll show the result. When do we do the uh, facing design? We need to consider one is uh, um, fracture which is the, the concrete wall between the nail and the, and the nail because there's a pressure from behind, make it bend, and if it's not str uh, stronger enough, then we'll have a fracture failing. The second is a, a puncture. If uh, uh, this can be like uh, uh, pushed through here, that's a, a, a puncture failing. So we mainly need to check uh, these. If you have the studs, for the final wall, you also need to check the studs if it's, if it's strong enough. So we will see that. And uh, uh, you can ignore those. The main thing you want to take a look is the CDR, capacity uh, demand ratio. Uh, this ratio should be greater than one, that, uh, which means um, the capacity is high than the demand. So if it's less than one, it means it's not strong enough. You may need to adjust the, the rebars, the thickness of concrete. So you can check uh, both of them. One is for the initial wall, one is for the final wall. If you just have initial wall, then you don't have to worry about the final. Uh, then uh, the similar for the puncture, we also have a CDR for initial and the final. And uh, if it's a, uh, above one, then it should be fine. But the same thing for studs, um, it should be greater than one. So um, I just had them, I tried several times to, to make it safe. Uh, for if you do it first time, you need to try a couple of the different things and then uh, it will make it uh, satisfy the, the requirement. Uh, that's how do you do the facing design with, with the visual slope? Okay, so this is mainly for the uh, soil nailing design, which include the nail itself. You need to determine uh, how many and uh, what's the spacing and uh, make it the better safety uh, meets the uh, requirement for, for the project. So. Uh, this is the soil, soil nail design. Um, next one, we will go uh, uh, to uh, rainfall slope design. Uh, it is the, the, the uh, design theory, actually the nail and uh, uh, the, uh, geo membrane or geo grid or geosynthetic reinforcement is almost the, the exact same. The only difference uh, differences are uh, the narrowing is for 
uh, stabilized an existing slope. But for the uh, rain, uh, for the uh, geosynthetic reinforcement, it's mainly used for uh, stabilize a slope to be built. So, uh, so that's a difference. And the, the nail usually is uh, uh, has an angle, but uh, for the geosynthetic, it's commonly is flat. That's the main difference. So let's look at a, a, a example, which is actually a, a real project. So, um, uh, this is uh, a slope. Here is the fill material we would uh, put in. And uh, this is the original existing slope. And this is for uh, a project in West Virginia, a high school in West Virginia. They want to build uh, a baseball field on the, uh, to fill this out, to build a baseball field on the top of that. However, there is a, a, a highway uh, at the toe of the slope. So they cannot make the slope uh, too flat, otherwise the slope will uh, will cut into the, the highway. So they have to make it, uh, uh, the ratio is one to 1.5 as the slope. Uh, they will use the, uh, the material uh, in the field, just uh, use the, the local material to fill that. Um, so they asked, the, actually I designed that, they asked if, uh, if it can be done. So what I did was I first just assumed there's uh, this is the uh, slope without any reinforce, reinforcement. See how uh, stable this slope uh, would be. So what I do is I did a slope analysis, slope stability analysis, and I find it is about uh, 9.9 uh, five, so it's if it's self, it's not going to be stable. So we need to add some uh, reinforcement into it. Uh, my experience is if you want to make a reinforced slope design, the initial factor safety should not be too low, lower uh, 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 than one. If it's a too low, say 0 0.7, 0 0.6, then you use uh, the geosynthetic reinforcement may not be cost effective. You want to consider changing the fuel material uh, or do something else uh, to make it a uh, little bit stable before you put the reinforcement in. And the second thing, I need to de determine how long uh, the uh, uh, geosynthetic would be. So, uh, first, I need to determine uh, what type of, uh, how uh, large the factor safety I want uh, to, to achieve. So I discuss with them, they say 1.25 will be fine. So we just say we uh, shoot for 1.25. So what I would do is you click all uh, cleaning surfaces and you, you will see uh, the lowest is 0.946 the highest will be three point something. So if I want to have a 1.25, I put 1.25 into this, and then I uh, click OK. So I will let it show from uh, 0.95 to 1.25, how far it would go. Because if I put anything uh, uh, beyond this, this curve, uh, this uh, uh, surface, then it will be only 1.5. So I should go a little bit beyond that. However, if I go a little bit beyond that, you will see it's gonna go uh, very far, almost kind of, you have to remove uh, the existing slope. So uh, what I suggest is, is we do some uh, 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 foundation improvement to make the slope uh, uh, even stable. So I cut this piece and the backfill with uh, gravel. 
back fill with, with, with gravel. And then I need to add uh, geosynthetic reinforcement into it. So before that, let's first review what's the material properties we need for geosynthetics. So we go to material and uh, we go to geogrid or, or, or this. I ha have those in Visual Slope. There's a, a, a rich database for the uh, reinforcement, uh, geosynthetic reinforcement. For that project, I, I uh, choose uh, three, two or three different types. Uh, two of them is a UX, uh, one of them is a uh, UX uh, 1600 HS. UX is a Unix uh, reinforcement. Uh, HS uh, stands for high strength. And also uh, BX1200, uh, which is a by actual, uh, actual uh, reinforcement. Let's just look at the, uh, the parameters we need for, for that. First, uh, for the uh, reinforcement, either for reinforced slope or MSE wall, we need to uh, give uh, the reinforcement uh, uh, material type. One is pla uh, plastic, another, another one is metal. Uh, the reason is, if uh, for, uh, for reinforced slope, it may not take too much difference. However, for MSE wall design, uh, once you use uh, plastic, the uh, fading surface, the angle will be a, a, a triangle. But if you use metal, it's uh, less uh, 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 expandable. So in that case, the fading surface will be a, a slope followed by a vertical line. So it's more like the fading body is more like a trapezoidal shape. So that's the, the difference. You, you need to specify what type of material. And, uh, uh, and also for, for if it's a sheet or it's a strap, uh, you, you specify that. And after you uh, uh, specify those, you give the name and also the long-term uh, design strength, allowable uh, strength. Uh, So-called long-term allowable strength is when you, you get a number from the manufacturer, they usually give you ultimate uh, strength, which is uh, much higher than the long-term allowable strength. The long-term allowable strength is the ultimate strength divided by different type of safety factors. For example, uh, for installation, because during installation, it will be damaged. So you, you will specify what is the installation factor safety, which might be 2.5 and uh, then uh, creep uh, fact of safety or different type of safety. You need to uh, divide the uh, ultimate by all those factors of safety to obtain the long-term uh, allowable strength. So this is the, the number. Uh, also, since we put uh, geosynthetic into soil, which will be a uh, uh, interface between the synthetic and the soil. And uh, in that case, the, uh, the, on the interface, the friction angle usually is smaller than the soil friction angle itself. So you need to provide a, a reduction uh, number based on what type of uh, material. Uh, also depends on, like if it's a, a strap, maybe a uh, little bit uh, less. Uh, the same thing for, for uh, cohesion. Uh, you can put this into it. And the front end, it's the same as, as the, for the uh, soil nail was say the, the front capacity. If it is one, which means the front will be as, as strong as uh, the geosynthetic itself. Maybe you have a like a wrap or something to hold it. But if the the uh, front 
there's nothing to hold it. It's just the free, then you need to reduce uh, this number. Uh, then the last one is the back end uh, fixity. Uh, it can be free or, or fixed. Uh, most time it will be free because it's just a place there, nothing actually will hold them. Uh, so it's free. But the, for some case, if sometimes the slope is very uh, narrow slope uh, against, uh, against the rock uh, behind, in that case, if you put a geogrid uh, or some geosynthetic into it, it will not be long enough to develop uh, the reinforcement. What you can do is, you can, if you say back is a rock slope, you can put some uh, anchors into the rock and then tie the reinforcement directly into the anchor. So in that case, uh, the reinforcement actually is fixed. It, the, uh, the reinforcement will develop immediately from the end to the to the front, which will not go uh, gradually. So there's a uh, uh, option you can you can you can choose. For our case, it's free. So after you have those, uh, we will close that. We have uh, uh, three different type of material. Uh, this we already excavate uh, the, uh, the clay out and the backfill with, uh, uh, with the gravel. And uh, we also want to put a layer of uh, geosynthetics into it. So I have that. So I draw one in there. And uh, the material for this one is UX. 1500. So I can sign this uh, into it. So you see this one I just draw in. But uh, for the slope, uh, you can draw them in one by one. But uh, the easy way is uh, you uh, array uh, method. Go here and click uh, grid generator. Okay, the same, very similar to to the uh, uh, soil nail, we choose the material. Uh, we choose the first one is UX, uh, UX 600. The start elevation is uh, 1044, and at the end elevation is 1106. Uh, uh, the vertical uh, spacing is four feet. And the break length is, uh, is uh, let me just uh, do one thing very quickly. Why I said I can do 60. Uh, so let me just do this. So I, I improve the, the, uh, the, the base and then I run a slope step blade analysis again. And uh, I, I get a little bit higher and uh, uh, I still choose See how does that affect the length of the slope? So when you do that, you will find uh, 1.25 uh, effect safety. Uh, the fitting surface is moved forward, uh, give me lots of room here. Uh, before was going all the way there. So by uh, improve this portion, actually reduce the length of the geogrid. That's the purpose. I I I. I uh, I did for, for that. Uh, of course, you have to try out, and then then you will you will. Do. So um, now let's go back to the. Uh, put this here. This is uh, ten forty four, uh, and uh, the, the top is eleven oh six. The vertical is four feet. Uh, Wrong, just uh, tap it down four feet, and uh, this is 60 feet. So, once we finish that, we click OK. You will see the uh, uh, the geogrid uh, ha have, has been placed into the slope, and we also have uh, so called a secondary 
the geo grid uh, because it's a uh, uh, one to one point five. The surface will easily be uh, 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 be eroded. So we put a secondary in just uh, uh, to uh, protect the, the surface uh, to of the slope. So what we can do that. Uh, we will use the same way to to do it. But at this time, I choose BX1200. Uh, the reason is uh, BX uh, is a uh, bias uh, uh, actual uh, reinforcement. It, it goes the both direction. So uh, it is very short. If I choose Unix in the field, I need to place it and for like a very short then cut and place very short then cut. But uh, if you choose uh, by actual one, you just need to place along the slope with the width of the row itself. So you don't have to cut. So that's why I choose uh, by uh, the BX uh, uh, reinforcement. The start elevation is uh, 0, 4, 6, and 11, uh, oh, 06 and it's still uh, four feet and uh, the length uh, was 13 feet. It's the width of the, the row. So when I do that, I also place the secondary into, uh, into the slope. So once you have that, uh, you can run a slope stability again and uh, see if uh, we'll meet our requirement. So now it's a 1.466, uh, six, six, so it's, it's much higher than what we need. Um, so that's, uh, that's fine. And uh, we, we can see this table gives us uh, how much uh, uh, force each one cut uh, with the uh, with the uh, the fading surface, a uh, lot of them are zeros because this fading surface uh, not touch those. Uh, some of them may ask if there are zeros, uh, should you put the, uh, uh, the uh, reinforcement into it? Uh, actually. Yes, you have to. The reason is, if you do not add those in, this fading surface will actually go inside and the factor safety will be much smaller than 1.46. Just because uh, of those reinforcement push this fading surface outward and make the factor safety be one point four something. So uh, don't be fooled by those numbers. They will still need those. Uh, this is the way you design. But uh, we also need to check one more thing for uh, reinforced slope. We want to see if this, the slope will actually direct slide over uh, the reinforcement. So what you can do is you go to this page, the third page, you click it again. It's finished, and you will see this is the fitting surface it's sliding over the last bit, the last line, but it, it, it's smaller than one point for uh, the, the circular fitting. So sometimes it, it is in control, so you have to uh, check that. And if you put all of them out, then the US visual slope actually is check each every. Uh, line, uh, layer to see uh, will it uh, slide over that. So this is the, uh, the, the check you, you must do. Okay, um, this is example uh, for how to design a rainfall slope. And um, now uh, since we are cover many things here, so I have to move on to the next one. 
next one will be um uh, let's see next one would be something like that will be a uh, 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 MSE wall. Uh, it's a uh, 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 tiered MSE wall. There's two uh, uh, tier of MSE wall. We, we want just demonstrate how to use Visual Slope to, to design that. Uh, for MSE wall, uh, what's the difference between MSE wall and the reinforced slope? If it, the slope is very steep, it's almost like a wall. But currently, uh, what we say is if the slope is steeper than 70 degree, it is considered as the MSE wall. If, if it's less than 70, it will be considered as a rainfall slope. But this number is just the abstract. And uh, so you can, uh, many cases, you can design an MSE wall with the method we just discussed use a uh, 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 slope stability analysis of one uh, a reinforced slope design method but also uh, there's a different method for that so let's go into it so i will first go into So there's no nothing there, but the material I already uh, put it in. It has a soil, infill soil, and uh, retained soil, foundation soil, and uh, uh, HDPE geogrid, and also the wall uh, wall facing. Uh, we already see those uh, material uh, parameters. Just to look at the uh, wall facing. Wall unit, wall facing. What's inside of that? Uh, it we need to provide the block if it's a block, a block height, a block width, which is the, the depth from the surf, uh, uh, the front surface to to the back, and the density, and the shear strength. Uh, uh, the shear strength actually is not the block itself, but the shear strength between uh, uh, blocks and the, the friction between the, the blocks and also uh, the setback or, or the angle. Usually, if for uh, MSC wall, it's leaned a little bit, but the full, now like a recoil wall, it's almost like a vertical, vertical wall. So this number can be put a very, very small number there. So this is the, uh, the parameter we Put. Actually, there's a one more parameter, which is the connection between the wall facing and the reinforcement. Uh, we're not going to discuss this uh, here. Uh, later, if you have a project, we can discuss this in, in detail. Okay, so now we need to set up, we need to set up the, the model. Uh, at the first class, we, we discuss a model where we have a drawing method, a tracing method. But from today, we'll see more using the generator to generate a model. So this one, we will generate it. So first, we go to generator, and we go to MSE generator. And then the generator page will show. The first one, we need to fill out uh, some numbers. This is the uh, uh, wall bottom, uh, bottom uh, coordinate, which is in this case uh, horizontal 18, uh, vertical 0. And the wall height is uh, 7.8 meters, and the front slope is 0 degree, and the Back slope is uh, uh, 
zero degree. And uh, uh, the back slope, if it's a zero degree, then there's nothing to the worry. And uh, then the reinforced uh, zone uh, depth. Usually, if a wall height is multiplied, use like 70% of the wall height as the reinforcement zone. But this one, we have two tiers. So we also need to consider the, the wall above it. So in this case, uh, I choose seven meters. It's uh, uh, almost 90% of, uh, of the, uh, the wall height. Then we choose the soil. For the uh, reinforced soil, we use infill for this case. And the retained soil, we have a soil name called retained soil. And the foundation soil, there's a foundation soil. So we will put that in, and then we also need to choose the wall uh, unit, we just say the face. Okay. And we will also add reinforcement into it. And we start from the first block from the bottom. And every block we will have uh, the uh, reinforcement. The reinforcement length equals the uh, reinforcement zone depth. So it's also seven uh, meters. And then I select uh, the reinforcement itself, HDPE. Once you have that, you click on the close button, then the wall uh, uh, section will automatically uh, generate. So this is the one. Then we can continue to use the generator to generate the, the top one, so we we'll use it again. Oh, I used the wrong one. Use this one again, and x, the next x will be 21. Uh, y will be 7.8, and the wall height is uh, 5 meters. Uh, I will say the, the front angle is still zero, uh, the back slope angle, I just say this time, there's a, a slope behind. It's 20 feet and uh, it's uh, uh, two meter uh, high, uh, tall, and uh, the reinforced zone is four meters. And uh, we still use the same uh, uh, material for, for the top wall. But in this case, I will not generate the foundation because the foundation is the uh, the lower wall, so I, I, I check no foundation, and I add uh, same uh, uh, reinforcement into it. However, for this case, I need to change this to uh, four. I still choose uh, HDPE as the uh, uh, reinforcement. Then I click, uh, I will ask you if the bottom is too high, I say no. So it will give me the other, another layer of wall. But I need to do some uh, modification because some lines uh, are not, uh, it's gonna be redundant. I just delete those lines, make sure there's no uh, overlap left lines. So I delete those. So they are deleted. Uh, then I just uh, redraw them in, the reason is, I want to be sure that's only, uh, oh, I was with the wrong one. I just deselect those lines. Instead, that I will zoom into this one. So I will draw those line. lines. So I draw those. So you need to do some work after you, you generate the second one. So I have that. Also, I will make the top line higher. So I have this horizontal uh, coordinate. So just uh, copy it. Close it. And uh, this one, I will uh, paste the one I just copied. So this line will be lined up with that. I add a boundary line 
to this one. So we have that, and then I put the material back in. So this one will be here. This one will be here. This one will be here. If you have a, say you have a surcharge on top, you can continue to add anything you wanted into it. This is just the way you can uh, you can uh, uh, generate a, a model, and uh, I said that there are two different ways uh, for the uh, for the analysis. I first use a slope stability analysis way to to do it. This one here. This so one you click the right mouse button, the point will go from this point horizontally to, to hit that. And then we, we go from here and here. And then you run a, a slope stability analysis. So it's 2.3 something. So the top wall itself would be would be safe. And we, we can also run the bottom one here. We see two of them together. So this is a little bit lower. It's a one point uh, four uh, five. It may be even lower because it's already hit those points. Maybe we want to relax it a little bit. So 1.3 something. So that will be it's also hit that. Maybe we'll have to further relax. So somehow you, you can figure this out. After that, you still need to run a direct sliding uh, analysis. even uh, lower, 1.28. It's like that. This push, this wedge will slide over the second layer of the geosynthetics, and uh, this will be 1.28. So this is a uh, control. This is the one way to design a, a MSU wall. Uh, lots of people still uh, use this way. The other way is uh, uh, Actually, is a uh, um, the more uh, formal way. Uh, we'll just do this. MSU what design? Um, so once you click this button, uh, this page will uh, appear, and you can see there are two uh, uh, tier of walls. Uh, the first one is from zero to uh, seven point eight, and then this is the top one. You can pick one of them does not matter which one first, just do the bottom one. And it will ask you for the connection data. If you set up a connection data, uh, it will search. If you have not, you want to set it now, you can say yes, you want to set it now. Otherwise, you can say no, uh, the program will just uh, generate a, a connection data for you. So I just say, say no. Um, so once you pick up uh, a word to uh, do the analysis, you, you will see the bottom one, the wall is 0.87 in height and the angle, and there is a, a force on the top. This actually is due to the upper wall pressure. It will automatically add that, that uh, onto it. And then you choose the design method. Currently, we have two different methods. One is FHWA, another one is NCMA. Uh, we just choose uh, FHWA for, for this project. We just say this is what we want to do. Once you finish that, you click analysis. It will be done instantly. Uh, this portion is called uh, external uh, result. External is considered the wall itself 
it's a rigid wall. It's just like a, a gravity retaining wall. So then you, when you design gravity retaining wall and you see the horizontal uh, moving, uh, the effect safety uh, should be 1.5. Uh, but in this case, we have a 1.34. And so that's why we maybe we need to increase the length of the geogrid. You need to do something. And it also give you overturning and uh, also bearing capacity. Uh, it will also give you settlement. So this is the uh, external. And internal is do like layer by layer. It will um, check if each layer, the, the geosynthetic strength is enough or not. So this is overstress factor of safety. So this one should be greater than 1.5. We find each every one is uh, meeting the requirement, and also pull out factor of safety. It also meets requirement, and also sliding. Uh, everything is fine uh, for the slide. So uh, this is. Uh, just to, as we said, this is kind of uh, sliding is a little bit uh, 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 lower or uh, external, just like the way it indicated in the, uh, the previous method. Sliding is kind of, uh, is, uh, 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 controls this, uh, this design. So you have the, uh, the lower wall, the same way you can do the, the upper wall. You choose the upper wall, and the same, same thing they will, they will ask you for the position. And for the upper wall, if we want to do a, a, a seismic, you can click a seismic. In this case, you need to provide the acceleration, the peak acceleration, we say 0.1, and uh, say a lot of the deformation is 0.2 uh, uh, meter, and one analysis. And uh, it will give you the sliding and overturning and the bearing. But this is for seismic, so the requirement is lower. It's 1.1 instead of 1.5. The same thing for each layer. We have a uh, have factor safety for, for, for each layer. So this is the, the, the result. So you can do this like a layer by uh, tier by tier to finish uh, the, uh, the design. So that's the, uh, the, the second way for uh, MSD wall design. Uh, I would suggest to use a both method, see which one give you a more critical uh, result, try to improve. But uh, there's, I cannot make like a comparison, which way is always more conservative. I can't, I do not have this comparison because the method is quite different based on different assumptions. Uh, you can, when you decide, you can uh, make, a, make a judgment to yourself. So, uh, we finish everything is kind of a, a lot and uh, I think I, I went very uh, fast. Uh, I hope you, you get some uh, flavor uh, about that. And uh, if you have questions, uh, you're very, very welcome to ask now. Anything at all? Uh, if not, uh, we just uh, 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 ended this class. And if you really uh, have questions, you can send an email to us, uh, help at visualslope.com. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good weekend.